Hi Civ fans, Lucif Kaiser here. This is the second part of my ongoing series on war and combat in Civilization VI, and today we'll be taking a look at naval and air units. Just a quick overview of the series so far. So last part I looked at land military units. Um, obviously this part we're gonna be looking at naval and air units, and we'll be looking at support and other units in part C. And then in part two and part three, you'll be looking at war, the war and uh, fighting and then looking at uh, taking cities and stuff like that. So first off, let's look at the naval military units. Obviously, they're all built in either city centers or harbors. And I'd first like to look at the naval melee units. So starting with the galley in the ancient era, it has a melee combat strength of 30 and a sight of two, movement of three, a goal maintenance of one, and they cannot enter ocean tiles until cartography is unlocked. The next unit, the Caravel, which is unlocked, well, not unlocked, but you can get it in the Renaissance era, has a melee combat strength of 50, which is an increase of 20, which sounds like a lot, but there's a big difference between uh, when you get the galleys and the, the, the Caravels, because there's like three eras difference there. So uh, it's not a huge difference in my opinion. And then it has a sight of three, which is an increase of one, a movement of four, which is an increase of one, and a gold maintenance of four, which is an increase of three. And they, uh, the caravels can enter ocean tiles. The next unit, the ironclad, that you, you, that you can make uh, during the industrial era, has a melee combat strength of 70, which is an increase of 20 over the, the caravel, and then a movement of five, which is an increase of one, and the gold maintenance of five, which is an increase of one. And ironclads cost one coal to produce and one coal to maintain. And of course they can enter ocean tiles. And not sure if you know this, but I learned this when researching this, uh, that ironclads get plus one movement if they start in coast tiles. And the final unit, the atomic, uh, sorry, the, the destroyer, which is available in the atomic era, has a melee combat strength of 80, which is increase of plus 10 over the ironclad, and also has 90 anti-air strength, which I'll sort of get into how air strength works and stuff a bit later when I talk about air units. It has a movement of four, which is uh, a decrease of minus one, and then a gold maintenance of seven, which is an increase of two. And destroyers cost one oil to make, to like to produce them, and one oil to maintain them. And of course they can enter ocean tiles and specifically destroyers can reveal an adjacent naval raider units. So now onto the naval melee promotions. So for the most part, I like going down the left side of the tree, um, but I do like getting that helmsman promotion, especially with the destroyer because you get that negative movement. So maybe I'll do the, the left hand side and then when I get a destroyer, maybe I'll, I'll get the plus one movement just because uh, to bounce that out. Now on to the naval range units. Starting with the quadrireme, quadrireme, I think I'm saying that right, um, that's available in the classical era. It has a melee combat strength of 20 and a range strength of 25. And it has a range of just one. It has a sight of two, a movement of three, a gold mains of two. And Quadrireums cannot enter the ocean tile until you unlock cartography. The next unit, the frigate, which I think is one of the most useful uh, units in the game, is uh, available during the Renaissance era and is a melee combat strength of 45, which is an increase of plus 25, which I think is, I think that's one of the bigger increases for units. And uh, more importantly, the range strength of the the frigate is 55, which is an increase of 30, which is massive. Um, I'll talk about sort of how, why these increases are so big, because really 30, that's like almost a, a kill almost in that sense. Um, but I'll talk that in, about that in a later video when I talk about combat and stuff like that. Anyways, it has a range of two, which is an increase of one. So you can actually hit those, those cities on coasts without um, getting like, too much damage or anything, or you can always run away. And then a movement of four, which is an increase of one, and a goal maintenance of five, which is an increase of three. 
and I think by the time you get I forget you should be able to enter ocean tiles. The next unit, the battleship, which is available in the modern era, has a melee combat strength of 60, which should increase to 15, a range strength of 70, which should increase to 15, and a range of three, which should increase to one. Um, Point note, I'll come back to that in just a second. Um, and it has an anti-air strength of 90, and then a sight of 2. So the, th the thing about the range is it, the battleship can shoot further than it can see. So um, you kind of need a unit to be able to look for the battleship, because the battleship actually can't see uh, what, it need, like, what it can shoot. So it's, it's good to have like a unit um, ahead of it so it can... It can use its you can use its full potential and the battleship can sort of stay back and just shoot and be safe right um it has a movement of five which is an increase of one and then a gold maintenance of six which is an increase of one and they cost uh gold to produce and one coal to maintain per turn and obviously they can enter ocean tiles and the last unit the missile cruiser is available during the information era and has a melee combat strength of 70, which is an increase of 10, and a melee range strength of 85. So no, not so just a range strength and just a range strength of 85, which is an increase of 15, and then an anti-air strength of 110, which is an increase of 20, and then a sight of three, um, which is an increase of one, a movement of four, which is which is an the negative, it's it's that's going down one. A gold maintenance of eight, which is the increase of two, and they cost one oil to produce and one oil to maintain. And obviously, they can enter ocean tiles. And so, uh, uh, with the missile cruiser, you don't have the the problem that you have with the battleship because the sight is the same as the range, and you can see what you need to shoot. <laughs> Onto the naval range promotions. So basically, there are two sort of sides to this one. It's a bit more structured, I, I think. So the left side is better for fighting units. So one is about naval units, and one is about uh, getting combat against land units. And then the other side is about fighting cities. So depending on how you're going to use your range units, you may want to pursue either the left side. So if you're going to be fighting a lot, a lot of units with your with these, uh, then you want to go left side. If you want to be more focused on taking cities, um, go on the right side. And then uh, the last two, heal outside of friendly territory is really good. And then plus one range um, with a coincidence range finding that's pretty good too. Now onto the naval raider units. The first one being the privateer, which is locked all the way in the Renaissance era. I kind of wish they added a naval raider unit that was available earlier um like just from history there's been like you know piracy and like raiders like throughout history like i'm not sure if you know but um uh, julius caesar was actually captured by pirates um as a, i think a, a young boy or something so there's, there's definitely precedence for this um i don't sh i wish they kind of maybe put one in the classical era or something um but anyways uh, on onto the units so the privateer as I said, Bilbo in the Renaissance era has a melee combat strength of 40, a range strength of 50, range of 2, set of 2, movement of 4, and a gold maintenance of 4. And special things about the, the, the naval raider units is that they're invisible, except to city centers and cantons, destroyers, and other naval raiders. Um, and they can also do uh, a special uh, action called coastal raids. So if they're next to the, the coast, they can raid certain things, like they can raid goody huts, so you can get the goody huts, or they can raid uh, barbarian camps, so you can capture those barbarian camps and stuff like that. And they can also raid like farms and whatever sort of improvements people have uh, built next to the coast. Uh, the next unit is the submarine, which is available in the modern era, and it has a melee combat strength of 65, which should increase to 25, range strength of 75, which is also an increase of 25. Uh, Unfortunately, it gets a, a negative one for the movement, so it's at three. And then a goal maintenance of six, which is an increase of two. And a resource cost of one oil uh, to make and one oil to maintain. And again, it has the same uh, basic effects as a privateer where it's invisible 
and can do close to raids. The next unit is the nuclear submarine, which is available in the information era, and it has 80 combat strength, melee combat strength, which is increase of 15, uh, 85 range strength, with a, which is an increase of 20, and a movement of four, which is an increase of one, and then a goal maintenance of eight, which is increase of two. And again, it costs oil to produce and oil to maintain. But um, really, you're going to want like uranium at this point because the special thing about nuclear submarines and its effects is it can help you launch nukes. So that's what's great about the nuclear submarines. On to the naval raider promotions. Um, I think some of them are pretty good. Um, I, I like getting the loot promotion and also the, the swift keel because you, you do suffer from, I think the naval raider units are rather slow. Um, and then I'll go for home, homing torpedoes and then silent running so they can so they can get out of combat. They can just jump in and hit someone and then run away. And then also wolf pack is great because you just get the additional attack return. Um, I don't really care. Or like I, I, I'm okay with getting boarding. I think it's okay. Um, but I find I tend to use raider units more for getting loot and stuff like that. Um, and that's it for the, the naval units. Oh, except for the naval carrier. I forgot about that one. Um, so, of, of course, the aircraft carrier is available in the atomic era with melee combat strength of 65, though you're going to be really using it for like fighting like um, actual units. You're really going to be using it as a, an aircraft carrier. And it has movement of 3, a gold means of 7, and costs 1 oil to produce and 1 oil to maintain. And the base effect is it can carry 2 aircraft, but it can carry more aircraft with some of the promotions I'll talk about in just a second. The, the downside to naval carriers is it's rather slow, so low, low movement and rather low sight. So um, it's best to get a, like a spotter for like your aircraft. So maybe bring a destroyer along so it can spot out ahead, and then you can use your 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 um, air units that way. So just looking at the naval carrier promotions, um, I definitely for going down the left side, just being able to have more aircraft. It's better because you can do more things with the the carrier. Um, getting scouting planes is okay, um, and definitely the plus one movement because it's rather slow. So uh, those are the ones I usually go after. Um, deck crews I don't really see a point in getting because you're not really doing much attacks with the naval carrier itself. Now just a quick overview of the naval units I've talked about. So naval me melee units they're they're good at protecting your waters. They're good at like defending, especially because they can detect those naval raiders. And they're also good because uh, they can, I, I didn't put this here, but I should have put this here, but they, they're the only ones that can really take cities besides naval carriers. And you're not really going to be doing that with your naval carriers. So um, if you're going to be taking cities, uh, the naval melee units um, can do that. And th the downside is that they can't take out barbarian camps or anything like that. And they're kind of resource heavy. Um, next unit the, the naval ranger units um these are great for taking down coastal cities like taking down the walls and stuff but they unfortunately naval ranger units cannot actually take the the actual cities so that's why you need the destroyer or something like that to do it and the, uh what's great about the naval ranger units as i said you, they had those two promotion trees so you can actually help out your 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 melee uh, uh your sort of land units as they're coming in and you can help um, support them that way. Also, naval range units are pretty resource heavy as well. Um, the one downsides is they can't see naval raiders. And then, of course, uh, the naval raider units. Um, great the bonus to that is that they are invisible. And they can also, as I said, they can take out barbarian camps, get goody huts, and all that, that cool stuff. Um, the downside to naval radio units is they're a little harder to get in terms of getting the right techs and civics and stuff because um, I think the privateer you can only unlock through the civics tree. Um, I think that's one of the few units that that you need to do that for. And um, so you kind of 
um, need to go a different way. Um, it's good for if you are playing a more culture civ, so you can surprise your opponents with these privateers uh, in the game. Um, the downside is that you know you, these are oil intensive units, and then the naval carrier. Um, what's great about naval carriers is that they carry aircraft. They're like floating airports, right? Um, the downside is that you know they have relatively low attack, and they can't see naval raiders, um, and they don't really get exp gain from the naval uh for, so from your aircraft so i wish they kind of introduced that so like if your aircraft did something the naval carriers got like i don't know a, like a, a fraction of the experience or something um because you're not really going to be getting experience from your naval carriers because they're not actually doing any attacking they're kind of just sitting there on to the air units and of course you produce your air units in your aerodrome districts um, I just want to first talk about sort of the different air bases for the different air units. So as I sort of talked about the aerodrome, uh, is the, the base unit, uh, district that you produce the air units in and has two air slots by default. And with the hangar building that you produce in the aerodrome or make is you get a plus one air slot. And with the addition of the airport, you get a another air slot. So in total, you get four air slots for the aerodrome if you have it all decked out. The airstrip is a special improvement that you can use with the military engineer. And I think this is very uh, important uh, if you're ever going on a military campaign, especially across, like maybe like going across an ocean, bringing along a military engineer, because you, it's more than likely that the cities that you're taking probably won't have aerodromes. So it's good to be able to Slap down this airstrip so you can land your your air units there so they can rest and stuff like that. So airstrip gets get three air slots. And then also, of course, um, any city center can house at least one aircraft, so one air slot. And then again, as I said, the aircraft carrier, as before, it has a base of two air slots. And with those uh, diff additional promotions, you can get additional air slots. So I think a total of, of four there. On to the air unit mechanics. So air units function just a little bit differently than your typical land units. So melee strength is usually just used for fighting other air units. Um, so when you're looking at an air unit, melee strength really means fighting other air units. Range strength is against basically non-air units. So if you send out a fighter, to like attack a like a I don't know a horseman or something on the ground, then it's gonna be using the range strength. Um, the range is how far the unit can attack from its basically base. So air units cannot deploy also into the fog of war. So if you can't see something, um, then you can't really send out your aircraft there. Uh, which oh kind of doesn't make sense, but it is what it is. Um, sight of course is how far the unit can see, and then. Movement is how far the unit can move from base to base, for the most part. Now, I'll just take a quick second and talk about patrol and interception. So, patrol is a special action that fighters can do. So, um, what it does basically is fighter units are sent to a friendly or neutral tile using the movement. And then the, this tile, this patrol tile, acts like almost like a base in the sky, if you can think of it. And then you can make attacks using the range from there. And while on patrol, fighters can intercept air units that come within their, their radius. Uh, again, uh, now, so I just talked about sort of how things, how these like patrols and other units intercept air units. So um, air units, as I said, use their their combat strength, so that melee, that sort of the the sword icon, not not the range strength when they're, they're they're fighting. So when you have a fighter and he's intercepting another fighter, it's going to be using their melee strength, not their range strength. And it does this interception does not necessarily stop the attack unless the unit is shot down. And a unit with anti-air power, like an anti-air gun, or as I sort of talked about before, like battleships or something. Um, protects its tile and six tiles adjacent um, 
not 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 completely, but like it it does like um like that that's its radius of like engagement, I guess. And uh, addition to this is the strongest anti-air unit will be selected if there is multiple um, sort of like coverages of like of units, right? If you have a couple units around that can both shoot up at the aircraft, is going to pick the strongest one first. And uh, a unit can only make one interception per turn. So onto the actual air units. So starting with the biplane, which is available in the modern era, it has the melee combat strength of 80 there, and a range strength of 75, a range of 4, a sight of 4, and a movement of 6. And a gold maintenance of 6. And uh, funny enough, biplanes don't really cost anything to produce, but they do cost oil to maintain. And as I said, so uh, these biplanes can perform patrols. The next unit, the fighter, which is available in the atomic era, has a melee combat strength of 100, which is an increase of 20, and a range strength of 100, which is an increase of 25, and then a range of 5, which is an increase of 1, a sight of 4, and a movement of 8, which is an increase of 2, and a gold mains of 7, which is an increase of 1, and fighters require aluminum, so it requires one aluminum to make and one aluminum to maintain. And again, fighters can do these patrols. The last unit of the, the fighter class is the jet fighter, which is available in the information era, which has 110 melee combat strength, 110 range strength. Um, both of these are increases of 10. And then a range of 6, which is an increase of 1, a sight of 5, which is an increase of 1, and a movement of 10, which is an increase of 2, a gold maintenance of 8, which is an increase of 1. And then, of course, the uh, same thing as the, the fighter. Uh, jet fighters require aluminum to produce and aluminum to maintain. And yes, as well, they can perform patrols, but they can also perform these priority target attacks. So basically priority target attacks, I've talked about them before, but they allow you to target support units that are in a formation with other units and stuff like that, or civilian units. onto the air fighter promotions. So there's basically two lines, uh, two sides of this tree, um, and they're very, very independent. You can't go across. There's no lines across for this one. So basically the left side is about fighting other air units. So if you expect to be fighting other air units, um, I find a lot of the AI does not produce a lot of air units, but with a new update that they're gonna be coming out with this week with the Barbarian update, um, AI should be making more air units, so maybe you want to be going down that road. Um, but I like using my fighters for fighting land units. Um, so that's the second side, uh, the right side of this tree. And so it's more about fighting air, um, all these different land units and stuff like that. Uh, next is the air bombers. So uh, the first unit is the bomber which is available in the atomic era. And I think you get it at the same time that you get the fighter unit with the same tech. And it has a melee combat strength of 85, a bombard strength of 110, a range strength of 10, sorry, not range strength, of a range of 10, a sight of four, a movement of 10, and a goal maintenance of seven. And they cost aluminum to, to produce and aluminum to maintain. I, I should note that like uh, the differences between the air bomber and uh, the, the, the sorry the, the, the fighter is that the bombers tend to be have a longer range and they tend as I said the, the the bomber has bombard strength so that's bombard strength so only really good against cities they're not really good against units. Um, the, some of the effects the bomber has so it can pillage districts and, and etc but no yields. Um, they can also perform nuclear strikes once you get um, some nukes. And the next unit is the jet bomber, which is basically the upgraded version of the bomber, which is available in information era with 90 melee combat strength, which is just an increase of five, but barred strength 120. So I think that's the, the highest in the game. So if you want to take down some walls, get some jet bombers, um, which, yeah, so 120, which increase of 10, and then a range of 15, which is like absurd. Um, 
and then which is an increase of five, and the sight of five, five which is an increase of one, and the movement of 15, which is an increase of five, and then a gold maintenance of eight, which is an increase of one. And of course, they also cost oil to produce and no, not oil, so aluminum to produce and aluminum to maintain. And again, they can do the pillaging and they can perform nuclear strikes and they can also perform priority target attacks. Looking at the air bomber promotions, um, I think they're all okay. Like, depending on what you want to do, they're all sort of different. Um, I, I kind of like the ones on the left side a bit more. So, box formation, plus one, like combat when fighting against air units, and then getting the torpedo bomber so you can attack naval units, and then tactical maintenance so you can heal after attacking. And then uh, some of the other ones are okay. Um, if you want to attack some some land units, you can get close air support. And then long range, uh, it's kind of nice just to have extra range, but you don't really need that one. And now uh, just a brief overview again of the air units. So air fire units are sort of multi-purpose. They can do uh, a bit of everything. They can attack land, like attack units. They can they can sort of attack cities. They're, they're not really meant to, but they can, um, especially because like they're not going to get really much damage. Um, uh, the sort of downside to air fighters is that they tend to have lower range versus the, the air bombers. Um, again, uh, all sort of units are aluminum. Uh, the air units are aluminum heavy, so that's sort of a downside. And then air bombers. Uh, these are you know what you you want to use for attacking cities. Um, they can use nukes and stuff like that, and it has a very like high range, like the highest range in the game. And then um, downside is that it takes longer to get, and the aluminum, uh, again, the aluminum heavy. Uh, it's a, uh, these units are aluminum heavy. Now, lastly, we have here an overview of all the naval and air units with uh, the ranged or bombarded strength in these bars here. And then the melee strength in these sort of circles here. And uh, again, all the types are the different colors. And you can just sort of see the, the, the progression of the, the combat strength over the eras there. And I just sort of wanted to note here that there's no medieval units, um, no, no, no medieval naval units at all. And then there's also no early naval raider units, which I kind of wish that they would add. And I kind of feel that missile cruisers and nuclear submarines could be a bit stronger because if you look at sort of the, the rise, again, uh, of the combat strength, they're kind of a little low. And I think missile cruisers could do a little better, whereas I guess nuclear submarines is warranted because nuclear submarines, they can launch uh, nukes, right? So that's pretty great. And stay tuned for the next part. We'll be talking about giant death robots, nukes, and like support units and all that good stuff. And I'd like to just thank you for watching. Please feel free to like, share, comment, and subscribe. And follow me on Reddit. There's probably a social link somewhere either on the channel or in the description. All right, thanks for watching. Bye.